Hey guys, today, um, this is awesome. I'm gonna share with you Andrew Yang won respect from even across the party line. Okay, so first, let's listen to what Chuck Todd, who previously kind of disrespected Andrew Yang, right? Had some arguments with Andrew Yang um, in his show. And now he started to change his mind. Let's see what he has to say about the crowded field. This is all going to play out. And, and what impact is it going to have on the 2020 election? I, um, my new favorite political pundit is Doc Brown from Back to the Future. <laughs> There's a part where, where I think it's at the end of the first Back to the Future. He picks them up and they've got to go into the future. And they're like, oh, there's not enough road. And he says, roads, where we're going, there there are no roads. <laughs> That's the way I feel about where we're headed. Really? I don't think any of us, anybody that tells you they know what's going to happen, give me a break. Yeah, so he was referring to like in the movie Back to the Future, right? When they went to the future, there are no roads, right? Cars are flying over your head. And it's totally something that you, people, you know, at that time, um, you know, from from the the, um, the previous, um, could not have imagined, um, and so that's what Chakta is talking about. You know, the future is totally unimaginable. I mean, it, this is the 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 most bizarre field um, he has ever seen. So nobody could predict what's going to happen, but. With that said, he's going to offer his prediction. Really? I'll say this. I think if I could make one bet right now, the only bet I'd be comfortable saying in public is I think somebody not named Warren, Sanders, or Biden will finish in the top three in Iowa, and that that person mm. will be the sort of, the, 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 that that person could be the candidate X that everybody's been wondering, who would be the alternative to Biden if Biden collapsed? Well. The best likely, it, and, and here's what I would say, then I would, if, if somebody finishes third, not named Warren, Biden, or Sanders, I think that person becomes a big deal. And uh, you don't want to fill in the blank. Well, no, you? I think you, on paper you would say there's two candidates best positioned to be, to, to be that person right now, Pete Buttigieg financially, and I think he plays well in Iowa. He's one of the, people forget Iowa Democrats are more religious than uh, average Democrats these days. Um, Democrats as a whole are a little more secular, obviously, than, than, than the country as a whole. But in Iowa, many Democrats are still are still weekly churchgoers. So is Pete, and Pete Hold on is a comfortable. Hold on a second. So, <laughs> male Pete, come on. Uh, Pete took a lot of money from corporations, and he lied, and he is an openly gay candidate, probably the first openly gay candidate. So, how would he be favorable among church-going people when in the Bible they said that God does not like, you know, gays and lesbians? It's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a shameful thing, right, in the Bible. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't completely get it. I mean, I can see that Pete talk about God sometimes during the debate. Right, but he's just using the concept. He's just using that to gain support. You know, it's taking advantage of his knowledge of the Bible to gain support and say, "Oh, you know, I, I go to church. You know, um, this is what I value and stuff, stuff like that." But if people dig into the facts, people, you know, look into what kind of a person he really is. I don't think he'll be so favorable among the candidates, you know, among those church-going people. People talking about God in ways that you see the other candidates aren't. So I would, I would just, I think Pete is got. I think Pete has a, a chance to really do better in Iowa. Because he's he's built for Iowa. Ooh. I don't know how Pete gets past South Carolina, but that's another story. But so is the second person Andrew Yang. To get out of Iowa, I think Booker has a chance to be that candidate out of Iowa, Come too. On. He's got a very good campaign. 
of that sort of the, the um, and the person best, no I think the person that is going to, that could be the wild card here that if Bernie starts to recede is Andrew Yang. Andrew is, Yang, wow. Is, there <laughs> you is heard a, it here, folks. No, there is a, I'm not saying Andrew Yang's going to be a nominee or anything, but Yang, there's a part of the Bernie base and the yeah. Yang base that, that interacts. The people that haven't left Bernie for Warren haven't left Bernie for a reason. I'll let you guys decide what that reason is. They're more likely to go to Biden or Yang. Than okay, to go to so you didn't, so okay. I what I would say is, I would. I think Yang is somebody that I would not be writing off as totally ga total gadfly. He may not be able to win do win a single primary. If you told me he finished third on caucus night, I wouldn't be floored. Yeah, there we go. So um, Chuck Todd previously kind of mocked Andrew Yang, right? Saying Andrew Yang was someone who comes out of nowhere, right? Nobody knew about him, and he just, you know, somehow made it to the base stage. And now, he's actually started to respect, have this, you know, almost ultimate respect for Andrew Yang, saying, you know, Yang could end up being one of the top three. And he's actually even not excluding the possibility that Andrew Yang could win the whole thing, right? I mean, he's, he's just being, you know, conservative. And he's also, um, he's basically saying, oh, okay, actually in, in one of the previous interviews, recent interviews, Chuck Todd said something like, all right, I'm done underestimating Yang. Now I'm going to overestimate him and then see if he falls short of the expectation. <laughs> so that's a completely twist of mind. And that speaks of how powerful Yan's messages and performances, his successful performances were. And let's take a look at another host that's from this is Tuck Carlson from Fox News. So this is even across the the party line. So let's see. Um, Andrew Yang actually gained respect from even someone like Tuck Carlson. So we told you a lot on this show about the potential dangers of big tech. Some of those dangers are imminent and they're technological. And the main one is robotics and artificial intelligence. Remarkably, the person, the political figure who is making the most sense on this subject, who has thought about it most deeply, is a Democrat who is running for president. He's Andrew Yang. He's an entrepreneur. And as we said, he's a Democratic presidential candidate. He says that artificial intelligence and expanded automation could potentially cause violence in this country and that we need to do something about it right now. Andrew Yang joins us tonight. Andrew, thanks yeah. very much for coming on. And I meant that with sincerity. I haven't heard anybody in our political conversation <laughs> describe the threat as clearly and compellingly as you have. Why should we be worried about automation? See, so Tucker is here is really, really respectful towards Yan's message, right? He said, you know, I haven't heard anyone so clearly articulate the issue, right, of automation um, and AI. Well, if you look at the backdrop, we automated away 4 million manufacturing jobs in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Missouri, and those communities have never recovered. Where if you look at the numbers, half of the workers left the workforce and never worked again, and then half of that group filed for disability. Now, what happened to the manufacturing workers is now going to happen to the truck drivers, retail workers, call centers, fast food workers, and on and on through the economy as we evolve and technology marginalizes the labor of more and more Americans. What will be the effects of that to you? I mean, that's, that's a massive displacement of people. What will happen once that happens? Well, as you said, uh, I think it's going to be disastrous, where if you look at truck drivers alone, being a trucker is the most common job in 29 states. There are three and a half million truck drivers in this country. Uh, and my friends in Silicon Valley are working on trucks that can drive themselves because that's where the money is, where we can save tens, even hundreds of billions of dollars by trying to automate that job. But Exactly. So uh, I appreciated that Tucker actually made the nice videos to go along with 
the message that Andy Yan is delivering, right? The rise of robots and automation and AI. And this is so true what Andrew Yan is saying. Um, just yesterday, this news came out. A self-driving freight truck just drove across the country to do a butter. And this is a 41-hour trip from Tulia, California to Quaketown, Pennsylvania. This is, this is real. People wake up. So this is written by uh, Courtney Linda. Uh, from Popular Mechanics and this is already happening see plus AI and an artificial intelligence startup in California engineer automatic driving system for, for commercial freight trucks so it made the world's first cross-country trip of its kind of a commercial delivery of butter to a small town in Pennsylvania and it's likely that automatic trucks will become mainstream before any um, self-driving consumer vehicles. And this is because the long stretches of highway are pretty boring and predictable compared to the dynamic buzz of last mile city streets. And yeah, so this is, this is huge. This is a f founded by Stanford PhD students and they knew that trucking, which has been experienced a labor shortage since 2003, is the primary method for shipping goods across the U.S. So they decided to apply their artificial intelligence know-how to long-haul trucking, building out the full-stack self-driving technology needed to make a cross-country freight trip possible. Look at this map. It's 41 hours trip. It's totaling... 2,820 miles. Wow, this is a historical journey. And this is not even the only company doing it, right? Back to back in March 2017, Plus AI became one of the first automatic truck driving companies to land a California automatic vehicle testing license, which is exactly it sound, what it sounds like. And there are actually 65 companies that hold one of these permits. So there are a lot of investments um, in this business and competition. And so they use this Plus AI SLAM technology, which is an acronym for its instant positioning and map building solution. And let's not forget, you know, this what stands out is the company's data fusion system, which combines the information to create a field of front detection, which is over 1,600 meters deep, allowing the truck to see far ahead. That's much, you know, better than, than human vision. And at the same time, Plus AI achieved a wild field of view to help the truck adapt to new road shapes and slopes. And this damn thing, <laughs> it's funny, was pulling around a, f a refrigerated cooler with 40,000, we repeat, 40,000 pounds of butter on board. That's insane. And um, the primary obstacle, the other primary obstacle behind, beside the perishable goods is weather. But just to be reminded, you know, the trip took place during the week of Thanksgiving, encompasses um, 12 states and some pretty inclement conditions, including snow. So it did very, very well. So let's take a look at this video very quick. This is the future we've been building towards, a world in which innovation is constantly improving our lives. Plus AI has completed the industry's first ever autonomous cross-country commercial freight run in a self-driving truck. Towing a refrigerated trailer filled with over 40,000 pounds of Land O'Lakes butter and only stopping for mandated breaks in a record three days. A 
safety driver and operations specialist were on board at all times to monitor system operations and assume control if needed. True innovation is self-evident in the many firsts that have occurred throughout history, and Plus AI's cross-country journey was a leap forward in demonstrating the maturity, safety, and reliability of self-driving trucks. This is the future waiting for us. Yes, that is the future waiting for us. And what is going to happen to those people who rely on truck driving for life? And what is going to happen to those mom and pop uh, stores that uh, diner right rely on that rely on these truck drivers to come out and eat and <clears throat> yeah so this, this is a uh, oh it's happening it's all happening so in turn truck drivers which earn very reliable livable middle class wage of around 43,000 per year will be hit and surely we won't replace all 3.5 million truck drivers in 15 years but even one-fifth of that number would be 750,000 drivers he wrote 96 of them so Alan said you know 96 of them are men average age 49 average salary $45,000 a year or of of a high school education that's 750,000 families left with nothing. You can't train them to become coders. It's just unrealistic. So that's the message Andrew Yang is delivering, right? It's coming true. It's, it's all coming it, and it, it comes faster than you expected. But I was just with truck drivers in Iowa last week and imagining that community recovering from their income going from let's call it fifty thousand dollars a year to to much much less than that catastrophically it's going to be a disaster for many many american communities you're one of the only people i've ever met who's honest about the effects of deindustrialization. i remember in washington the idea was they'll all become computer programmers and so everything is fine but that didn't happen exactly My i mean how do you train the those truck drivers that you know without um, college education to become coders, you know, programmers. It's insane. The question is, do we have to sit passively back and let this happen to the country? Well, that's why I'm running for president, Tucker, is I think it would be insane to just sit back and, and watch this automation wave overtake our communities and our economy. So we're not ostriches. We can get our heads up out of the sand and say, look, we get it. Artificial intelligence is real. Self-driving cars and trucks are being tested on the highways right now. And we need to evolve. We need to actually start pushing the way we... This is not testing anymore. I mean, it's a real delivery. It's a commercial delivery. It's historical, right? So, okay, Andrew Yang was right. At that time, it was a test, but now it's not. It's real. You think of economic progress to include how our families are doing, how our children are doing. Uh, and things that would actually matter to the American people because GDP is going to leave, lead us off a cliff. You know, robot trucks, great for GDP, terrible for many, many American communities. So we need to get with the program and figure out how to actually make this economy work for people. I just, I, I sit with my jaw open, I agree with you so strongly. Let me ask you finally, why isn't this a central question in the camp? Yeah, so Andrew had basically told him, right, we have to have this human-centered economy, human-centered capitalism. We, we were measuring the, the wrong thing. The GDP, you know, the stock market price, those were wrong measurements. I mean, why those are record high, but, you know, people are suffering. You know, life expectancy have, has been declining three years in a row. You know, there's just so much, you know, drug, over, drug abuse and addictions and, you know, enormous amount of stress level and just crazy um so we have to you know change these measurements right and that's what tucker was respecting yen about is we need to have the right measurement otherwise we can't get it right the pain of everybody running for president on any side and why instead that's are they talking exactly. about issues that really are kind of frivolous why aren't they talking about this you know it's a good question tucker i mean one of the reasons i'm running for president is to because some people are dumb and some people are just you know so detached from, from, from average American people.
right? I mean, those career politicians, unlike Andrew Yan, uh, who has been working, right, on the ground with people, he has been, his Venture of America has created thousands of jobs in those, you know, swing states, Iowa, Michigan, you know, um, Missouri, all those places where automation, um, you know, took away jobs. And he's, he's created thousands of jobs. He has talked to tens of thousands of people. He knows what people really need. Not, not those, um, you know, career politicians who are just so detached, unlike those, then is so detached from the average American people. And um, you, we have even these billionaires running, right? Tom Steyer and, you know, climate change guy. And well, he was an impeachment guy and then he now he becomes a, a climate change guy. And then we also have Bloomberg, it's even more detached, I mean, as a mayor of New York. I mean, so detached from those people living in rural area. Yeah, that's why they they don't talk about it. And until they, after they heard Yan talk about it, and then um, we see Mel Pete and, you know, um, Joe Biden started to to mimic Yan, right? Started to um, steal Yan's lines, uh, such as the fourth industrial revolution and stuff. And now Warren, even said um, she would consider um, adopting Andrew Yan's $1,000 a month universal basic income. Push this into the center of the mainstream agenda where every candidate should be talking about what we're going to do about the fact that we're automating away the most common jobs in the economy right now. As we're sitting here together, the labor force participation rate in the United States is 63.2%, the same level as Ecuador and Costa Rica. And if anyone thinks that's where America ought to be, I mean, that number is even going to be further challenged when all this technology comes online. So we have to make America embrace this challenge of the 21st century and then try and address it together as a people. Last question, shouldn't people who cite unemployment statistics be penalized for saying something so stupid? Yeah, we, we have a, a series of bad numbers, and I referred to yes. GDP as one. Uh, certainly the headline unemployment rate is completely misleading. Yes. And one of my mandates as president is I'm going to update the numbers so they actually make sense to the yes, American people. Yes, yes, so we can know what's going on. Otherwise, you can't make wise decisions. Yeah, right now, again, and you know this, our life expectancy has declined for the yep. last three years, first time in 100 years because of a surge in suicides and drug overdoses. How can you say an economy is healthy when our people are dying? It makes I, I literally couldn't, I don't even know what you think on the other issues, and I, and I just support what you said so much. I appreciate your coming on. Thank, Thank you. you, Tucker. It's great to be here. Thank you. Wow. And Mr. You see... <laughs> um, Tucker here just showed so much respect for NGN's message, right? So he's just saying, yes, yes, I really like that part. And he's also saying, exactly, I mean, we, we, if we measure the wrong thing, then, you know, how can we make progress? This is, you know, awesome. I, yeah. Um, yeah. 13 is the deadliest gang in America. Some apparently are planning to assassinate law enforcement officers. We will investigate what's going on after the break. That's not related. But anyways, um, yeah, that's that's awesome, isn't it? Um, and that's probably why Hassan Minhaj also started to, you know, um, turn Yang Gang. Right, this is this place. Well, <laughs> you had Andrew Yang on, on your show. English. He's Tucker not did. black, you know that. No, no, no but I'm just saying, no, he's, he's he's Asian. He was, yeah, but we went to Chinatown last week uh, for the show, and we just wanted to see how young millennial voters, you know, interacted with Andrew Yang. All right, we we have a clip. Uh, everyone, take a look at this clip. Here's Hassan Minaj and Andrew Yang. Do you know who he is? No. That's fine, but you know I'm who sorry. this is. Yeah, I know who that is. Would you be interested in? Oh, of course. The nation's first Asian-American president. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm Asian, right? So you would vote yeah. for that person for sure? Yeah. Like, no doubt? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, you're looking at him. This is no, I, yeah. I like that. He's been doing yeah, like, This is the person. You're looking at the, the Asian, uh, you know, the first Asian president. Literally every interview and press outlet he possibly could. <laughs> He's a good sport. He's a good sport. Andrew's a good sport. You know what I like about him? This is what I love about Andrew Yang, right? 
Every politician is coming in. Oh. And they're talking about confusing concepts, and we all think that we know them. We're like, oh, yeah, tax reform, Syria, tariffs. And he's like, who wants $1,000? <laughs> yeah, that's his thing. Yeah, yeah man. Who wants a thousand dollars? You want a thousand dollars a month? Just take this liberty bribe. Universal basic income is basically just allowance for adults, and he just cut right through. Yeah, but I mean, what would you do? What would you if you were running for president? How? Okay. What? Would... Um, well, so I mean, he's making fun of it, right? I mean, he's a, he's a comedian, but that's actually something um, Tucker, I mean, Andrew Yen and Tucker didn't get to talk about is the freedom dividend, one thousand dollars a month, because if you have the great displacement due to AI and automation, then how do those people make a smooth transition? I mean, um, when, when their jobs are automated away and their families are, you know, their lives are jeopardized, right? So Andrew Yan is saying, oh, we should, you know, um, put $1,000 a month to everyone's hands and then uh, help them make this transition, right? help them improve the you know nutrition of the children and you know pay the you know the, the rent or you know pay off the the, the college um, loans etc and um, that would you know significantly reduce the stress level and reduce crime rates and immediately um, create millions of jobs when people you know uh, spend the money because 78% of people living paycheck to paycheck, right? When they get $1,000 a month, they're going to almost immediately spend in their community. Um, and that would create millions of jobs right there. And or they can invest on themselves, retrain themselves um, to, to uh, get a better job in the future. So yeah, so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, comment below and uh, like and subscribe. Thank you.